Hey, what's up guys? Chris here. May is upon us. And as the weather warms up, let's take a look ahead at the next three months in War of the Visions. There's a little bit of something for everyone, unless of course you play the Earth element, then go sit in the corner and keep your mouth shut. Headed into year three, it looks like we'll see a lot of non-limited units and vision cards making a return this summer, much like last summer. And this really is great news, especially for free to play and light spenders, as you don't have to go too crazy chasing a lot of these units that we'll talk about in this video. This is because things like UR select tickets and free pulls will allow you to pull these units potentially in the future. There's really no major quality of life updates or patches coming to the game. Everyone should be settling into double vision cards and trust stones by now. And speaking of which, make sure you farm up as many purple trust stones as you can. Use the item exchange shop every single month to get UR shards if you haven't been doing that already. Thanks for watching, guys. If you learned something new, be sure to click that thumbs up, subscribe buttons below. Let me know in the comments section what you're looking forward to in the next three months. Let's get into it. We are currently in the middle of Persona 5 for Global. Not a lot to say here unless you play Light or Dark. Joker and Violet are fine units. Joker, great for this annoying Elena meta, and Violet to pair with Elena or Locke, but neither are so good that I would say you should go out of your way as free-to-play or budget players to grab them. Queen is the free unit from this event. Lightning, Strike Attack, decent, but again, not a character we really should be investing Vizor or Blossoms into, even if you mainline Lightning. Of course, we know that Final Fantasy X will be making a comeback later this summer. The big news is that these units get a second master ability. We will discuss these later though and talk about how new players in 2022 should be looking at these units as well. First up, we have Asterisk, and yeah, he's one of the best units in the game. He can do great damage, doesn't take a lot of damage, still very much solidified in the meta in JP many months later. If you want any semblance of water for PvP, he's definitely a must pull. In fact, I think he's so good he should be considered by all players. The drawbacks here are that he is cost 100, so the pull rate isn't going to be great, and Esther is in global. And I do personally stand by the idea that Esther will dumpster Celeste and Asterius, but make no mistake, this is not reason enough to avoid Asterius if you are already thinking of pulling on him. Playing a water team without Asterius is like eating a hot dog without ketchup and mustard. Sure, you can do it, but are you really willing to take that risk? To swear by Rising Sun, it's a light card. You want this for PvP if you main light. If for no other reason than half of the top teams seem to be Elena and Light, and the light resistance on this card will help a ton with those mirror matches. In fact, expect almost every single top PvP light team to run this card, so you'll be at a huge disadvantage if you don't get it. If you don't play light, then yeah, you can probably pass. Faint Light Vision Card. Well, this one's a little bit different, and this is one of those rare vision cards that I think you actually can pass on, even if you main water. Sure, it's great in mirror matches against other water teams, but you can likely get the water attack and accuracy from other cards. If you don't have Siren, thanks for the votes, or tune-up time, then probably you should grab this card, but if you don't have any of those cards, it's hard to imagine that your water is all that strong anyway, and you should probably be focusing your Vizor somewhere else. Resnick really is a great unit, despite her wonky knee, and she's kind of like a lightning version of Min Wu and Ayaka smashed into a single unit. She's really a great support unit, and if you already have Cloud, Renan, Charlotte, Ibarra, Esther, Resnick's going to be tough to fit into your lightning team, but if you only have like two of those units that I listed, whether you're a new player or building up your lightning element, Resnick is going to be a great third piece to add into that team. Given that she's not limited though, I'd be hesitant to chase her on banner. Her biggest use will probably end up being a healer for lightning only hard missions. On the other hand, the lightning vision card that arrives with Resnick is an absolute must for lightning teams. Anytime I see 15% agility on a card like Mad Money, I buy, buy, buy. To sum up why this is a must have vision card, I'll go ahead and let Jeff Goldblum explain it to you. Must go faster. Little Leela, beautiful blade. Turns out, yes, in War of the Visions, we will have yet another version of Little Leela, and yes, she'll be kinda good. 
Okay, more than kinda good. It seems that all you gotta do to get made into a meta dark unit is die, take off some clothes, and come back to life. Oh, sorry guys, spoiler alert. Leela completely revives dark in meta PvP, clearly designed to help you deal with healing and slash attacks, Elena, Engelbert, Yuna. Make sure you pick her up if you play dark. If you don't play dark, eh, you could probably just wait until her fourth version comes out. Dark Chain Anima Vision Card and Esper, this is next. This is basically a must have for dark slash teams, Blade Leela included. For other dark teams that use Golbez, Prompto, Helena, or Garvel, it's a little less necessary, but still the single target resist and the flat dark attack are both great bonuses that I would strongly consider using as a replacement for the Diablos card. The Esper has a treasure trove of anti-light tools with light killer, light resist, and slash resist, making it a decent choice for anyone who wants to play anti-light in PvP. The 10k step up for the Esper and then slow building the vision card through hard quests is actually a viable strategy for any account, whether you or not you play dark. Valentine Ildira is next, probably, I mean we're going to assume that, that she will follow the same release pattern as Valentine Salir from last year. Ildira is a fire evasion unit, kinda, and if you main fire, that'd be the only time I might consider pulling for her. Fire doesn't currently have the best vision cards for evasion, and she just doesn't quite measure up to the other fire powerhouses like King Mont, Satya, or Terra. That said, you can do some interesting things like fire missile attack with Winter Mashery and Satya, or throw Ildira into your fire team to force enemy teams to plan for evasion, which you normally don't have to think about when you're attacking a fire team, but being non-limited in such a specific niche leads me to believe that you could probably pass on Ildera without too much pain. Final Fantasy X will make a return at the end of June. We'll get to the older units in a sec, but the new Vision card and Esper from the collab is Valifor. This is an absolute must-have for light teams. See that dark killer down there? Magic attack, magic resist penetration. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty obvious this is great for units like Jaden, Yuna, and Elena, and to counter beautiful blade Leela for all these light teams. The Esper, however, doesn't have a whole lot outside of boosting light teams, and as Shania Twain would say, that don't impress me much. Non-light mains can probably safely pass. Master Ability 2 will hit Titus, he picks up Slash Penetration and some Slash and Missile Resist. He is a no-brainer third unit to throw in with Celeste and Astrius as a Water Slash Bruiser and also Team Haste with his Hastega ability. Most water mains probably already have Titus at 120, but if you don't, you definitely should make sure you 120 him when Final Fantasy X returns. Newer players should get Titus free, <clears throat> Final Fantasy IV, Cecil, and Titus is a good enough unit that almost all accounts should consider bringing him to 120 as an all-purpose slash attacker, chaining for raids, and a centerpiece for their future water teams. Yuna? Just yes. One of her main weaknesses was cast time on a lot of her abilities, which gets upgraded or fixed with her master ability too. She's still prominently in use in a lot of light teams and still might be the overall best support unit in War of the Visions, plus an amazing TMR to boot. No player that I've ever talked to who has Yuna has regretted getting her, whether or not they play light. Oron, though, is another story. Uh, is he a strong unit? Yes. Uh, he's kind of like an ice version of Cloud with some AoE attacks, huge damage, auto hits, and more. The problem is that he's not all that different from a lot of other non-limited ice slashers like Velric, Laswell, and Gilgamesh, even with his upgraded master ability, giving him some spirit and slashers as penetration, he's pretty much still a glass cannon. While Auron is a strong unit, he really doesn't do that much that other ice units don't already do, and I would consider him a luxury piece for almost every single account, even those that main ice. Suteki Dane, this is an absolute must-have for Water Slash. Titus, Celeste, Astrius, Farm, Rachez, these are all units that love this card. Even Lara Croft can make use of the Slash attack with some of her subjobs. If you're one of the people that picked up Celeste and Astrius, make sure that you get this card at level 99. The last of the big hitters in this video, Sodaly finally arrives in Global as a Wind Magic Attacker and kind of a support unit. I do think in global he's slightly less impactful with the presence of more the merrier, 
If you main wind and already have both more the merrier and Halloween Leela, it'd be difficult to justify the 40k Vizure chasing a cost 100 unit. On the other hand, if you already have something like Joom and Winter Luartha, Sodaly is more than capable of providing the magic punch that a wind team needs. His re-raise ability and heals can also turn more the merrier into a really annoying re-raise zombie, kinda like the Yuna Elena combo. Sodaly's matching vision card is at the end of the road. AoE resistance, critical evasion, 15% agility for wind units. Jeff, you wanna take this one again? Must go faster. Absolute no-brainer, must have for all wind teams. This might be the best wind vision card we will have to date. Much like how I talked about the Laswell card for ice, I think this is like that card for wind. This card is so good for wind teams that I think everyone, whether you mainline wind or not, should probably consider picking it up just for the future of their wind team. It's that good. The last unit we're going to talk about, Eliza, listen, she looks amazing, like Downton Abbey meets Castlevania meets take my heart and do whatever you want with it, but as for her kit, yeah, another luxury ice unit. Missile attacks tend to be kind of meh anyway in War of the Visions. Eliza is okay as a counter to Joom with protect and shell removal, defense breaks, and penetration, but her best use might actually be as a wing woman to Aranea in an ice pierce team. Ice mains will most definitely find interesting ways to use her in specific situations, but overall, you'll need some tools to really make her useful. Lastly, it's the matching vision card for Eliza. Let's not complicate this. It's an ice version of Frederica's dream. Crit rate you can get elsewhere. Missile attack, not the greatest bonus. The best part about this card is probably the slash resist, which you can also get from like the Solidus card, but as an ice main comp, you'll be hard pressed to find a primary slot for this card unless you're running one of the very few missile attackers the element has, like Eliza, Rosa, or Barrett. And that's it guys, the next three months in War of the Visions Global. What units and vision cards are you looking forward to most? What surprises do you think we're going to get in Global over the next three months? Let me know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching guys, we will catch you next time.